Sup, nerds. Welcome to episode 22 of Powerful, a power metal podcast. Today, we're talking to Eric and Stephen of Tanagra, a progressive power metal band from Portland, Oregon. We talk about their new album, Meridian, coming out on the 26th, as well as Portland and beer and wings and video games and all the other great and wonderful things in life. Enjoy the show. I'm Steven of Tanagra, at Tanagra, or whatever implication you'd like, you know. Nice. And uh, Portland, yeah, from Portland. Great place. I don't know if Eric. What band are you in? uh, Tanagra. That seems useful. And (laughs) college football heavy metal band. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Stadium. But that's, that's, that's here nor there right now. Uh, This is Eric, the... uh, I'm probably the least known member as you could imagine because I'm the bassist and uh and then I do like backup vocals and stuff but uh yeah you'll see more of me in the future fun fact about Eric his name is spelled Eric that's right <laughs> yeah in fact that was the first time I saw that spelled you know it I looks like, really mm. cool I, I just gotta say it looks really cool <laughs> spelled that way <laughs> but it's, it's funny how like, a cooler Eric <laughs> It's funny how that comes up every time where it's all like, <laughs> and I'm not even, was, an air, you know, that's just how it is. It's just, that was completely unplanned. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's the best thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if Biscuit ever introduced himself. I didn't know. I was just getting around to it. Okay. Um, I'm Andrew. Um, I live in Phoenix. Um, I'm drinking a nice Phoenix beer mm. and uh, don't look at what I've been listening to. Okay. I wanted to ask you guys about your top four power metal bands, but I also want to ask you guys about what the beers you are drinking are. Which oh, one do you want to do first? We're drinking did we, Bubble Stash. Did we actually start the podcast? I'm recording. We're all oh. recording. You're not great. recording? Well, okay. Three, three out of four <laughs> no, of us I'm are recording. recording. So, uh, I didn't know. I've been recording. I just didn't know that we actually started. Okay. okay. We're all if recording. Want, that's great. If, if, you, if that's you want, we can go. We can go again, but eh, it no, works. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I can chop off all of these, but all right. I so back to it. beer. Right. Okay. No, don't don't chop anything. No, no, I leave it. Wait, wait. Which we want to do? We want to do beers first, and then top four power metal bands. Yes. Okay. So why don't you <laughs> tell the audience, the listeners, what you're drinking right now? Well, we are currently drinking Bubble Stash from Hop Valley. It's a mosaic hop beer. And uh, Ooh, we okay. are beer snobs, so at least, cool. w- or or we are friends with beer snobs, so we're snobbish by proxy. You're adjacent beer snobs. Yes. Oh, great! Yeah. I I can relate to that very well. And so I don't know enough to tell you like excellent. what's good. I just can be like, oh, I know more than you. You know, that's about it. it sounds pretty juicy. Is it a hazy IPA? Um, it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> excellent. Those are pretty in right now. <laughs> yeah, they are. Those still in. Yes, they're all over the I place. Those were out. No way. We don't have those here. Well, we don't have those I think here. they just—they might not have arrived to Arizona yet. Hazes have been around for like six years. Yeah, mm, they, yeah. they just haven't shown Where up. Do you think they originated? The up East here? Coast. It, it, East Coast. Oh, they came. They came. They so I think the Portland breweries have kind of perfected it, but they did originate from the East Coast, didn't oh, they? Oh, probably. I don't know. They're called East Coast IPAs. Wow. Well, how may- dare they? Maybe I'm confused. Then I'm I- I'm more of a, a citrus IPA guy. Is that not citrus hazy? Citrus IPA. I, believe that's hazy. I, th- yes. I think citrus is like a characteristic, like a flavor note. You know, like some people say, oh, there's like a pineapple or a grapefruit note. Yeah, grapefruit. You know? Grapefruit peel. Yeah, yeah. That's. Mm, uh, cool. I don't like grapefruit. But I like grapefruit peel. Grapefruit peel. IPA. That was the IPA zest. that caused my IPA Stockholm syndrome. Cool. I, I love it now, but I hated have it. You, you, oh, you yeah. guys have been to a Great Notion, right? It's in it's in your city. Wait, Great Great Ocean. Great Notion. Great No. Oh wait, is that the? I don't know. It's There's like Portland. You live there. I know. There's like a billion breweries here, so like, we haven't heard of one. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll just say this. There's a There's a beer store. There's two beer stores close to my street, like the ah, a beer store, lovely. Yeah, where it's just like I, I, you can buy the the trooper beer there, but like it's okay compared to all the Portland beers. 
You can buy that mm-hmm. one Megadeth beer if you're into that. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, um, right? Um, <laughs> band beers are cute. I feel like band beers is what people do when they're like kind of, yeah, Basically. we're all up in the scene. Now we're going to make a beer. It's the logical no, transition. No, no the, the, the next transition is, is the champagne. Yeah. Hammer falls <laughs> Oh, the champagne or the wine. <laughs> yeah, I've seen wines. I, yeah. Someone's yeah. got a whiskey too. I, I, I do yeah. feel like a uh, one of those like thrash bands should make like a really bad, you know, light moonshine. beer. Or moonshine. Oh. Or, oh, or something gross. that, you know, I feel like that's uh. a marketing plan for, for those bands. Or it's like, hey check out this Annihilator light, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I think um, the band Mastodon made a, like, really dark, stout, Now, heavy... you can't really get away with making a beer if your name is, like, As I Lay Dying or something. Like, that's not going to be a bi- good dying. beer name. Oh, God. Not that I... <laughs> no, <Solo>. don't worry. <laughs> I think they're garbage. I don't want to be <laughs> dying because of a beer. <laughs> Stella, what uh, what beer are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking oolong tea that I got from 99 oh, Ranch. Nice. That was nice. like three dollars a pound or something. You, wow. you get beer <laughs> by the pound? No, I'm loose drinking tea. tea. I'm drinking loose leaf oh, tea. Oh, sorry. If I had if I had the will to get up and drink beer, I'd probably drink my bottle of Russian River Happy mm. Hop that I got at the grocery store. That wow. I'm saving for the weekend. Because I'm old. I'm going to feel like garbage if I drink it today. <laughs> Stella's a weekend warrior. I'm a weekend warrior. Hey, that's yeah. that's like my 82nd favorite uh, Iron Maiden song. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we- weekend oh. warrior. I'm gonna choke that's on an tea. Iron Maiden song? It is. My yeah. goodness. Did we talk about what mm. beer Biscuit's drinking before we uh, uh, I'm drinking transition to power a, metal? A Four Peaks Kilt Lifter, except they recently changed the recipe. Oh, and it's not very good anymore. Oh no! What kind no, of beer sad. is it? It's a uh, Scottish style amber ale. Ooh, amber ale. They were acquired by uh, Anheuser Busch <gasps> like two and a half they years ago. Sold out. Oh, no. So it, it only took two and a half years for them to change the recipe. That's not well, awful, I guess. But now, but now it's just like too sweet. That sucks. Hate it when they change the recipe and it becomes too sweet. <laughs> garbage <laughs> it tastes kind of like a slightly better bud light now why is there so much sirens outside of my house fuck what we're talking about beer <laughs> sorry 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 no i uh, yeah um yeah thanks for sharing all your beers that you're drinking guys sounds mm. very tasty um you know what else is tasty power metal Let's Ooh, th- yeah. oh yeah Get into um, the juice. Well, yeah, well so, I'll start by taking an easy one, and I'll I'll yeah. put up Blind Guardian, and then I'm gonna shove it immediately to Steve. What? Yeah. Okay. So you pick okay. one now. Yeah, we want to know. <laughs> we want to know, like both of you, Steve and Eric. Um, what are so you your, guys take turns. What are your top four power metal bands? One right. of you go first. I'll I'll, I'll go first. Uh, I get yeah. I'd go Blind Guardian. They're they're pretty quintessential power metal for me. Um, and then probably Iced Earth behind that because Schaefer's right hand, <laughs> Un- <laughs> unreal. Uh, and then for the other two, oh man, I could cop out to like Demons and Wizards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, are you going to say Demons and Wizards next? Um, I could, I mean, I'm just thinking of like the ones that like really got me into it. Well, two others that I, I think are pretty amazing. Uh, the original albums of uh, Pyramids. Those are still mm. go-to. Mm. Yeah. Especially, uh, I mean, they're both great, but especially uh, Legend of the Bone Carver. Bone I'll just Carver sit there and like is great. mouth the lyrics yeah. to that the whole hour. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, Bone Carvers. <laughs> it's it's funny because, you know, a lot of people hear that band for like, oh, Matt Barlow's in that band and, and Iced Earth too. And then. And then, and then you hear Bone Carver and like, hey, this is really good too. Yeah. Like, I like this more. Lance King is an amazing fella. Yeah, um, I think that album is just well written. Unconventional yes. pick, but great choice. I like it. I haven't listened to Pyramids. That's my that's my uh, input. That's your homework. <laughs> you got it. You got to go listen to those first two list. albums. And if you hate them, that's I'll fine. The but uh, the the yeah. uh, the keyboard player is amazing. Yeah, and he he guested for. Uh, I met him. Cause he was playing with mind maze and 
It's funny because he's like in all the maze bands. Maze <laughs> bands. Might as well be in corn. You know, oh God. I'm always confused Pyra Maze and Mind Maze actually. <laughs> it's because they're both mazes. Yeah. So the the keyboardist for my for my intel, whatever. Um the guy in Pyra Maze uh guested for Mind Maze when they went on tour. They did like a, a rare West Coast tour. And it's like, whoa, here's here's Mind Maze, and then there's Pyra Maze keyboardist. And then they're selling both Mind Maze and he was selling Pure Maze stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah. How you confusing. Know, it, it was confusing, <laughs> but I thought it was quite grand. That's awesome. So let's see. So I, I said so far I've said uh, Blind Guardian and uh, Pure, Pure Maze. Maze. Yes. I'd give two more. Um, I don't know if it counts, but I'd say Nevermore. That was a huge influence on me. So that's they're kind of prog power ish. I mean, they're just kind of heavy in general, but uh but uh, yeah, Nevermore is pretty amazing. Um, or I always thought so. And uh, big influence, you know, just heavy riffs and uh, amazing guitarist and Jeff Loomis, amazing singer in uh, World Dane. Uh, drummer's pretty good, you know. Um, yeah. I guess they have a bassist. <laughs> <laughs> um, Never knew. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I, I, it, without going through like my my book of CDs and really thinking about it, I guess the next one off the top of my head would be Camelot. And I also don't know if they count, but I assume they oh. do. They uh, Camelot counts. I think they count, right. but we need a caveat on Camelot. Um, which Camelot do you like, Roy Conn more or Tommy more? Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, I don't the whoever the first singer is. Uh, I uh, have to say the first, first, first Camelot singer? album is actually fantastic. I the love first, it. First singer? Yeah. The first album. What's, was it called well, Eternity? Uh, Vanderbilt. I can't check because Metal Archives is broken today. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's, sorry. It's, what was what was the question you were asking about which singer, right? Which era? Yeah. Which era? Is that true? Yeah. we were. I, I think Biscuit was asking you which era. Yeah. Of uh, Camelot. Whoever the heck which was Camelot? on Black Halo and, and the one before it. <laughs> Roy Khan. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Roy. There we are. Yeah. Khan. Mongolian. Okay. He's not really was, Mongolian, but you know. Or uh He's like half Swedish, half Thai or something. Honorary Whoa. Mongolian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Whoa. <laughs> I actually just picked up the black halo yesterday from a from a store. It was twenty bucks. That's Whoa. probably 20 too bucks. expensive. Probably too expensive, but I bought it. I, I hope you enjoy it. Power metal's a pretty penny in I will. States. <laughs> I will enjoy it. Yeah. Cool. It was double shrink wrap, so I think it might be new. <laughs> it might be so like Steve, double, double new. So Steve said, "Blind Guardian, Iced Earth." What else you got there? Steve? Um, yeah, you owe us two more. Any others? I owe you two more. Do you want to betray? No, 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 no. I got it. I got it. Do you want to betray the power metal forums nah. and say Iron Maiden? No, because Iron Maiden's not power metal. <laughs> Iron Maiden is not. Iron Maiden's my favorite band, but they're not power metal. See, I got them on a tangent now. No, I, I don't want to go to this. That's a, that's a whole other. <laughs> That's a whole other time. I, I just they're just, like a precursor, but yeah. you know, we're talking about power metal, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is why we're here today. Um, I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with probably one of the first power metal bands I found. Metallion. You guys heard of Metallion from like the 2000s? It sounds like a made no. up name. Uh, it's it's. It sounds, it, I have not. Actually, I don't know. The, it's one big... of those names that like everybody ends in Ian or Ia. <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> and I get them all mixed up. They're 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 fine. They're just. I remember when I first I bought the first two power metal albums. I bought and I didn't know what power metal was. It's like in 05 was uh, touched by the it's Crimson okay. King. By nobody knows what power metal is, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but demons, demons and wizards. I, I I didn't know who Blind Guardian or. Or Ice Earth was. Actually, you yeah. found Demons and, and Wizards Actually, before Blind Guardian Ice Earth. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, cool. so so I have, I have a, a mild story about that. So I found, you know, Ice Earth and, and I was listening to Night at Storm Rider a bunch. And I was like, you know, I got to find another band that sounds like this. And I happened to run into Demons and Wizards and I was like, oh, cool. Another completely <laughs> unique band that sounds like that. And then it was like years <laughs> later that I found out, you know, that it was the that's same guy. The same like, guitars. oh, okay. <laughs> I wow. Feel, I feel that's like that's great. more common though. I, I remember hearing like back, back, back in the day, um, on like satellite or serious, whatever on demand channel, like had like arena rock, rock, indie. And then there's the metal channel. And then a lot of it was just, you know, you know, 
Bro, bro. Yeah, like a lot of bro, bro <laughs> stuff. And I'm all like, this isn't what metal is. But then one of the songs that came up was Terror Train by Demons and Wizards. And I'm like, I've never heard this before. And I'm like, are I you, really like this. So, Are you talking about channels on TV or radio? I am like having oh, a hard time conceptualizing so what you're that's, talking that's, about. That's the thing. It was on TV. It was like channels like yeah, 900, what? whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it was like while, the 920s. Oh for my God. This is what yeah, I get for For a while, Satellite had like TV. a crap ton of music <laughs> channels. And it was just, I mean, all it was was a black screen and some text that told you what band it was. And then you could leave that on. It was kind of like that era's Spotify. Although it might that still exist. Cool. I don't know. It's like yeah. Pandora, uh, I, but large. Yeah, basically, <laughs> there's there's a couple cool bands that I found. One of them being Demons and Wizards, and then all that. I guess Metallium because I bought them based on their album cover, and they just so happen to be <laughs> power metal. Cool. They're kind of they're kind of iced earthy. Their whole big thing was like Millennium metal because they started in the year two thousand. Oh my gosh, Ew, they actually labeled was... themselves as Millennium yeah. Metal. That's yeah. Amazing. I, Modern I, Millennium. I, I, I've, I've heard better power metal bands, though. <laughs> if it's like, <laughs> it's 2019, they're on their fourth album about Y2K and the coming crisis. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's like a history album at this point. But, you know, <laughs> you get real attached to the first power metal, like, albums or bands that you find, you know? Yeah. I, I guess another, an actual one would be Armory from uh, cool. Massachusetts. They're, they're pretty rad. Sick. They, ha- they have two albums from like 07 and 08. Basically the, the, the album artwork for our albums, we, we, we got the same guy that did their second album. Wait, really? Yeah. I didn't know. That's where I found it. No, everyone. Wait, you found today. Gary? Yeah. I figured Tom found no. Gary. No. Oh. No, I've. We both see. I'm learning over. stuff about Tanaga here. Is Imperial? I've been here for Realms like eight years or whatever. The first or the second one? My, uh, 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 Imperium Realm is the second one. Is the second one? Yeah. Okay. So that. So you that, have the same artist as that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When I when I saw that, that was like, that's that's what we need. We need <laughs> we need that look. Oh yeah. And yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, but uh, cool. but yeah, they they, I, I I in my mind, I always thought of them as like the our brethren from the far west because they're on the east coast of America. What? <laughs> and they play power. I, I don't know. The, the, <laughs> you've just reversed your uh, directionality. I, well, you know, they call, you know, they call Japan and all far east and all that. Okay. You just went really, okay. really far okay. west. Yeah, I, I, it's, like, you went all the way around. <laughs> you went all, if I turn around, you, east you, you becomes could, west. <laughs> So, and so this, this is makes sense. just so you know, like this is how every band conversation goes when when Steven starts interjecting. You know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. Like oh, I haven't man. told this anyone that. <laughs> we that makes sense. no, like I don't even know why I brought that up. But hey, thank you for sharing with us. I really appreciate it. I Powerful feel like, exclusives. Yeah, I feel like girls. we've like learned a lot about you know what inspires you and your thought process. <laughs> the far west. Well, yeah. Well, so since we're <laughs> since we're on that and we're on your past and your art and and all that nonsense. Yeah. How did uh how how did you guys meet? We'll, we'll start mm. with that. I think Steve should we'll take most. We want to know the um origin story <laughs> of Tanagra. I've I've got it. All right. So do it. I'm I'm gonna go in my perspective and then I'll switch perspectives. But uh, oh. all right. <laughs> so I was you know on Facebook like any person in 2010 would be, and. One of our mutual friends, I think it was Crystal. Uh, she, basically, she she put up a Craigslist ad and she was all like, hey, my friend's trying to start this band. You should go do it. And I'm like, OK, fine. And this is Craigslist ads. And I don't know if any of you guys have tried looking for musicians on Craigslist, but well, I guess we found like. Two. Yeah, well, it sucks. It's 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 <laughs> not it's not too like you're going to get either, um, you know, deathcore um christian rock oh, um, wow. or some <laughs> some kind rock, huh? yeah yes we, we found a jazzy not, not dude power metal. yeah uh, but let's get back to the story yeah. so so yeah there's a lot there's it, it's slim pickings basically so i was reading this craigslist ad thinking oh, okay whatever and i'm going through and i'm I'm seeing like blind guardian being put up you know um queens reich and all these other bands i'm like iron Maiden. i don't know if you said iron Maiden, but there's these bands that like 
piqued my interest right away. I'm like, okay, I need to send something to him right away. Here we go. And I type out how I am Steven Soderbergh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm into this, 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 and that, and everything else. Um, and then in, I'll just jump to this. So I get a message back saying, hey, we've met before. And <laughs> I'm with your childhood friend from first grade. <laughs> and we're hanging out right now. And I'm like, wait, what? You know, Craig, what? You know, Craig, what's going on here? So apparently Tom and my friend from first grade, Craig, um, had met. Craig was in this uh, thrash band called Excruciator. And uh, basically um, they were hanging out and Tom was, Tom's a singer, by the way. He was sending out Craigslist ads, feudal Craigslist ads, because we had the same thought process. There's, you know, not much on Craigslist that you can find, but um, we basically, I knew right away that like, this is going to go somewhere. It was like an omen almost like the person I've known since I was five was hanging out with, with this, with some guy. And I guess we had met before, but I, he was just some quiet dude at, you know, local metal shows. And I was some quiet dude at metal shows oh, that just kind of sat guy. in the back. The so small world. <laughs> yeah. So basically from there, Tom and I met up in June of 2010. Um, we met at a excruciator spellcaster and vector. I don't know if you guys oh, have heard of Vector. I've heard of Spellcaster. Yeah. So this is yeah. early day. This is like early. This is weird. 2010 is early, apparently. But that's crazy. That Yeah. That this they, is like pre 2010 when Spellcaster yeah. was still around, I guess. Yeah. When they're still a, still a deal. But um, Tom and I met up that night to because we want to see Craig and Excruciator playing them. And we want to see this. I get, we didn't know who this band was. But Vector was this you know, sci-fi thrash band that we didn't know. They're just the band touring through town and we talked and that was the first time we, you know, talked about what we wanted. This is, like I said, June of 2010. And then we saw Vector and, and then we were blown away by them. And Tom and I, like we, we hold Vector and that night as like the birth of what would be Tanagra. So cool. That That's kind of, that's kind of the, the origin right, right there. How'd you get Scott? Scott. Oh, I guess we found him on Craigslist too. <laughs> uh, I guess we had okay success rate with Craigslist. Um, yeah, yeah it, maybe Craigslist isn't so bad after all. No. <laughs> now, you guys might not know who Scott is. But he's the original drummer. He was on the first demo and technically not on the first CD because he wasn't the one who recorded the parts, but he wrote a good chunk of the parts. But, oh, okay. So yeah, so that's Scott. Uh, he's in Valiant Bastards yeah. right now. I don't uh, know how they're doing, but they're. they're they, I'm going to say that they're world famous. No, they released an album <laughs> earlier this year. I'm bad with names because Portland bands right now are releasing so many albums this year. It's they were, they're waiting for us, and then they're just going to drown the world. Yeah, <laughs> going to drown it it's, out. It's uh, it's called Harbingers of Chaos on January first. Yes, check it out. Yeah, check it out. Valiant it's Bastards. It's got cool art. Nice it's got, searching. Like, it's got like a weeb yeah, symbol I, on it. No, I, I, I don't know what it would sound like, but it probably sounds like, you know, straightforward heavy metal kind of stuff. So if that's up your alley, go get it, I guess. Um, so then let's see. Those three were a thing. I don't know what show I was at, but I uh, Josh has been a good friend of mine. We were in a band a long time ago. It was originally called Black Despondency. And then it was Labyrinthine. And then I got I left Labyrinthine. And um, they made sort of an album and then broke up and then. Uh, sorry. Uh, and then basically he was doing some stuff for a while, just kind of hopping between things. And he ran into excruciator. So he was doing excruciator for a year or two. And um, I don't I, I was with some weird core band. Um, well, I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna, <laughs> I don't think they exist anymore, <laughs> but uh, they might. Anyway, I, I was. Looking for something to do. So I, I got into Maseroth and uh, I was playing with them for a little bit. And he saw me up there and he's like, oh, it's cool that you're playing. Uh, this doesn't quite seem your gig, you know, but uh, here's some guys who are looking for a basis. So I did both bands for a little bit. And then I ended up, um, you know, just going to Nagra after that. And so then a few months later, I don't know what exactly happened in Excruciator, but Josh decided that he wanted to... Um, start playing with us instead, basically. 
So he ended up leaving Excruciator and I think what Craig also leave. Yeah, Excruciator kind of um kind of not imploded, but half their members <laughs> left at the same time. Imploded. Yeah. Small interjection. I love how we're not only getting the story of Tanagra, we're also getting the story of the Portland metal scene <laughs> yeah, circa 2010. Yeah, Very this incestuous. is like something we wanted to ask you guys later, but we're getting a little bit of it now, oh, which is wow. cool. I mean, I could go deeper, but yeah. So, so anyway, basically, <laughs> we, now you guys play like the exact opposite of thrash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. It's 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 when I when when I see where we started from in 2010. 2019 it's it's a it's a neat evolution because i don't think i would have thought i would you know you wouldn't have expected blast beats and clean vocals together (laughs) and and, uh you know uh doom sections yeah i would have to i would have to i was uh, to be honest when i saw the length of your tracks i was like oh my god i can't do this (laughs) but holy shit I, re- I, re- I I think it really works. I love how you guys have all sorts of different like sections. We have like atmospheric riffing and then blasty blasts. Well, you know, blasty yeah. blasts. one of my favorite things, mm-hmm. and you can hear this sometimes in Immortal or uh, you can definitely hear it in Blind Guardian. Uh, the A couple of the songs I'd reference there would be... Um, uh, what, what's the at giant the, song? At the Edge on, of Time? Oh, yeah. At, well... On on the Wheel edge of time, time, there's Wheel of Time and there's Sacred Worlds. Both of those yeah. are like these really long songs that yeah. take you kind of through this whole journey, you know. And uh, what's one at the end of Night of the Opera? And then there was silence. Uh, and then there was silence. And, was silence. and um, the, the best that's another one. It's like Guardians 15 minutes life. and you go through this whole giant story, you know. And it, it it's it's like you don't quite know what's coming next each, each minute of the way. And it takes you to somewhere new and it takes you to another riff. And then all of a sudden the chorus comes back and it's, it's like such a release. You, you've been waiting I, six minutes for that chorus, you know? <laughs> I completely agree. I I saw Blind Guardian on their last North American tour in like 2015, I think. Mm. And uh, I had never heard. And then there was silence before. Jesus. Um, oh, no. And they You're they such played. a lucky guy. I How did you them survive? Like- <laughs> they played and then there was silence live. And I was literally slack jawed in awe for like That's ridiculous. 12 fucking minutes. I saw until Blind the, Guardian like three times and I never got that song once. I'm I w- really I was salty. S- slack jawed in awe until the na 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 nuz came in <laughs> towards the end. Jesus. And then it snapped me out of it and I was like, holy fucking shit. And you're like, <laughs> what's happening? Towel. What's happening? Yeah, I feel like if, you, if you're going to make like a 15 minute long song, it better have like six different parts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it was... It was like a religious experience, man. It was crazy. I'll that probably polarize the Blind Guardian fans out there, but uh, you know, when when I first found Blind Guardian, I was super late to the party, and I got there with Sacred Worlds. I actually found, yeah, I actually heard it on the game Sacred Two. I got like a free copy from. Oh, you're oh, one of those found guys. Found it through the game. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. you're one of those yeah. guys. So, That's so cool. I heard those it guys. through Sacred Two, which was like a free game that came with like a land party thing. I went to. And, uh, anyway, and the song didn't exist on a disc. You couldn't buy that disc. And so I decided to search Blind Guardian. I ended up getting a Follow the Blind. And I was super disappointed because I was like, because <laughs> I had heard Demons and Wizards. I had heard Sacred Worlds. And here's this awesome, this powerful metal? voice. And there's like a thousand tracks. <laughs> and then I get Follow the Blind. And he's like off key a little bit and stuff. Aww. It's all thrashy. I was like, oh. And then I just totally abandoned Blind Guardian for a while until <laughs> until <laughs> at wah, the edge wah. of time came out. And then I bought that, was blown away, bought Night at the Opera, bought Imaginations, bought uh what, Twist in the Myth. So I eventually came Nightfall. back around. Nightfall. I can see yeah, how I this should be uh, polarizing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people <laughs> like really the trash. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So, yeah, you guys were clearly inspired by a lot of power metal and spite going through some um, thrash and other genres of music in your, like, previous band experiences. We are here now with Tanagra. So we were looking up what a Tanagra is, and um, we were (laughs) wondering why your band is called Tanagra. We found out it was an all-girls school, a town (laughs) north of Athens, Greece, um, a machine learning software. 
a mythical location in an episode of Star Trek. Yeah. Which is it? It it's is. definitely the all girls school. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure it's not so the machine are, learning software? <laughs> so are you guys like an anime in real life? Actually, side note, before he gives you the real answer, uh, I, I am a security AI guy. Oh, okay. In in real life or whatever. IRL. <laughs> but uh, all right, Steve. Um, uh, The latter. It's the uh, mythical. The Star Trek episode? Yeah, it's a Star Trek episode. Oh, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not the girls. I, I, I didn't even. That's the one we haven't even found yet. Yeah. We knew about the. Uh, the, the co- We knew about the, the town in Greece. We've actually. Oh, um, someone cool. from Tanagra. Um, they they actually wow, like, reached out cool. to us. That's and awesome. We, we sent a copy. Like we sent. It's like they found us. And like, hey, we're from Tanagra. You know, blah blah blah. And like, here you go. Here, here's an album. You know, <laughs> we, we, I got to actually send something to Tanagra, Greece. That's so awesome. Um, wow. But uh, but yeah, it came from the, the Star Trek episode, um, Darmok, and it's uh, yeah. Well, so what Steve's leaving out, uh, maybe it's because he's got a couple beers in him, was uh, I, part of the way it, it came about was he uh, he originally had a song completely unreleased. Uh, it's not on anything. Um, maybe we'll eventually rehash it. Uh, it was a very long song that was broken up into chunks, kind of kind of like the way the episode was, where each chunk was like a metaphor of the previous chunk or whatever. And that song was called At Tanagra. And so then we're sitting here cool. for months trying to figure out what our friggin' name's going to be. And then he and the drummer were sitting around. Yeah, we we were at an IHOP, um, <laughs> and uh, basically Scott was like saying, "How about Tanagra?" And I guess it fit the syllables. It was three. Like apparently, we thought long and hard <laughs> about what our name was. We didn't want like a sentence span. We didn't want you sentence spans are so much fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we couldn't think of anything good, and so Tanagra kind of st- stuck and. Metaphor, like, you got to do three syllables too. Yeah, yeah, easily, One, two, easily chantable. Yes, I, and I think that kind of like, you got to play for the live show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! You know. Oh my gosh! Imagine trying to. Okay, give me a sentence span. The gates know. of destruction. The gates of destruction. <laughs> Molecular dismemberment. Veal fetus. Wait, no. <laughs> Those are our fictional tech up fans. Yeah. Well, I guess I've never really revealed this on the podcast, but um, I've made up a. I've made up a fake band name called Veal Fetus. No one take it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's ingenious. We've got, we've got the yeah. Veal Fetus slash Molecular Dismemberment Tour coming yeah, your way. Yeah, that sounds pretty 2029. brutal. 2029. Yeah. There's some guy in Nebraska who's copywriting that name right now. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, if you... Whoever steals Veal Fetus, if you guys don't stick to my vision of the band... I'm going to be really sad. You guys have to be vegan. <laughs> yeah, you guys it. have to be Whoa. vegan because I purposely picked that. I was like, this is gross. Everyone's going to think it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone's going to go vegan. Mm. <laughs> okay, totes off topic. So, um, speaking of meandering things, <laughs> ultra oh, frog. Wow. That's, that's a good segue. Perfect so, segue. Yeah, go, so, yeah, go ahead, Biscuit. So, like, Take your away. last album had a good amount of power to it. I would say it's predominantly power with a splash of prog on it, right? But, yeah, uh, I'd agree. Your guys' your guys's new track that you dropped the like a month ago, Meridium, is like ultra prog as fuck. <laughs> um, sh- are, can we expect the whole album to be as ultra prog as Meridium, or is it going to be as power prog as before, or are we just going to be like, prog power instead totally depends on the song like um etheric alchemy is pretty pro uh sorry is pretty power um straightforward in a lot of ways um sidria is is uh i think that's the next single that's coming out and that's the that one's got a little bit of progginess to it just because it's like in five four instead of four four and a couple little things like that but otherwise it's like the most power metal song we may have produced yeah honestly uh that's a four minute song, so I can assume it's short and sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh it's about I don't know, twelve minutes shorter than everything else. Um <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally basically. Is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's some songs that like start think you're like gonna listen to a power metal song, like <laughs> here we go. And like halfway through it's the most like it's it's goes off the rails for a little bit. Yeah. 
but then it comes back and like, oh, it's power metal song again. It's 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 it was a very the whole album was a very interesting. So you guys have process. Like, have you guys yourselves heard uh, Witness? Oh, we didn't give. I, I well, I, I figured that probably not. Yeah. No, no, we haven't. All right. Well, you get ready because because that's going to be like a. I think it's about thirteen minutes now uh, or so. Fourteen minutes, eighteen seconds, according yeah. to the track listing from. A month and a half ago. So yeah. you chose Meridium, which is at 11.35 as your first single. And then your second single is going to be Witness. At no, 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 Sidria. no, no, no. I was going to I was going <laughs> to like, talk about it for just cow. a second because you were you were asking about um, you were asking about uh, what's kind of powerish and whatever. And I was going to compare yeah. Witness to a little bit like. Uh, uh, dang it. I always screw up the name and I'm not willing to say it. Uh, the, the, that big song on a, a, a night at the opera. God dang it! And then there was silence. There we are. All right. That's that's very <laughs> cool. That's so very it, it has a ballsy of you. It to has say. this huge. Yeah. I I mean, it, it ended up being like two hundred tracks, so I, it might com- it might compare at least in the uh, tracking department. But uh, that thing is huge, and it sounds huge, and the choruses are huge, you know, and and it takes you on this massive journey, and that to me is kind of what power metal is about, right? Cool. You're setting up some high expectations right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm expecting to be taking on a 14 minute and 18 second journey. Well, I'll tell you this. The song's that long, so. <laughs> <laughs> All I right, mean, here we go. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a side question that we didn't actually prepare that I just thought of that I've actually thought of two days ago, mm. but I was seek- keeping secret. Um, I noticed that your last two songs are called Across the Ancient Desert and Witness. Are they by chance Malazan Book of the Fallen? Themed? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. the ancient desert the the Across the, glass the Ancient desert? desert is about Malazan. Um, is that about uh Raraku or is that about yep. uh okay. The, it's uh, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll admit to this. Uh I haven't read the books. My our drummer They're phenomenal. Chris, our drummer Chris, <laughs> I've heard really I've yeah, yeah. Chris is way into Malzahn. It's a it's a journey and a half, but yeah. it's phenomenal the entire way. Awesome. So so yeah, Chris is was kind of the mastermind uh, behind Across the Ancient Desert, at least in terms of like concept and like a, a number of the riffs and stuff like that. Uh, and then Witness actually started, I think, as a Malzahn song, um, but it, it didn't end up being one. I'll put it that oh, way. Okay. Like yeah, that, that's uh that's one of the one of the main characters like tagline he says witness and then he yeah. goes off and like fucks people up mm-hmm. i i think he intended it to be and then it just didn't turn out to be but we still liked the title so it stuck <laughs> it, it, it became tenagrized where um we it just kind of became our like it started as one concept and then and tom went through the tom filter which uh <laughs> which I is love a good how filter. you guys turned well, that into like, a verb is that the right Grammar thing, verb. Yeah, tenagrize. <laughs> That's a that is a, you look it up in Webster. If it's not there, we will sue them. So Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty violent. <laughs> yeah. Pretty I didn't say we would pillage them. We'll get there. Um, sue and pillage. But you were asking about uh music style and stuff, and it's like when when the songs were going into the pipe, if you want to think of it that way, you know, desert sounded straight in a lot of ways, black metal before the vocals. Like, it's got some really, it's got some bl- uh, blast Ooh. beats. It's like... You guys got a ton of trim picking on that song? Yeah. Ooh. Quite a bit. There's a lot. There, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of tremolo. There's, I, I there's love bunch of, There's some blast scales, beats. Especially, there's especially like some metal. huge epic vocals, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, by th- by the end of it, by the end of it, once we get all the vocals on there and the synths and we get all the mixing going and whatever, then it sounds like Tanagra. But when it was just played in here and it was like four of us sitting here on guitars and bass and stuff, that's not, that thing sounds like black metal. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, when we're initially tracking that song, I remember looking over at Tom. It's like, what are we, a black <laughs> metal band now? Work? <laughs> it's going to work. It's like, like, oh, that's, no, that's going to be good. Can anyone here do harsh vocals? <laughs> black <laughs> It's some black, anguished, uh, anguished so whales up in here. Black slash power is a thing that isn't done enough that I think is well, and, and it doesn't end up with harsh vocals either. Uh, uh, since you guys vocals. haven't heard it, and presumably the people who hear this haven't heard it, you know, um, 
Maybe. Yeah, that ends up being kind of like a black power mix. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should That's rephrase exciting. that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, a, a power black hey, metal mix. I've been waiting that? to use this term forever. This is Cascadian power metal. Oh, my God. You guys totally borrowed that from the Cascadian black metal. <laughs> yes. That's right. People. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, we cool. earned, Hey, we didn't borrow. We earned it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I okay. guess so. But, I, I mean, I kind of joke around with that tagline, but I don't know what else to call it. Okay. You know, so um, it's, 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 it's neat. Whoa, that's, <laughs> that's a really loud pop. But uh, no, yeah, uh, Desert is definitely one of the songs that, that I didn't think was going to necessarily work. But then it just became another Tanaga song for us. Hey, man, Whoa. anything can work. I listened to a fucking ska slash black metal song Whoa. recently. Oh, yeah. You linked me to that. It's fucking awesome. It was weird. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it to you guys later. Sweet. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. But mm-hmm. I no one would have thought it would work. But it, it definitely works. Anything works. All right. a- anything anything, so anything can't gonna be work. good. So it appears that you guys have really tanagrized power metal into your own, like in like into your own Cascadian interpretation. You know what else <laughs> you've um tanagrized? Your album art. We were like looking at this um this what is is this by the artist? We were we were we were we were reading this like I guess article about the album art of Meridium, and it seems that everything on this album art like symbolizes something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so we've got ahem. We have a lot read. of questions. Biscuit, Let go. me read ahem. Our first question. Our first album's art depicted a sunrise. Quote, this, this time the sun is high in the sky. Besides the more general themes of transition and change, this imagery and the concepts it represents are very meta. It all ties into the intimate story of the band itself. My question, since you say that this is at midday, the sun is high in the sky, does that mean there are only ever going to be three Tanagra albums? No. Whoa. No. Whoa. Well, <laughs> I, I, well great, great question. Th- that's an interesting thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but we have at least two things in plan, and, and probably three the last time we were chatting about it. But, you know, given that the last thing took four years, hopefully we can improve the cadence a little bit. But no, it will not be limited to just three albums. Guaranteed. Right. Perfect. That's a powerful guarantee right now. That's very powerful. That's an, that's an Eric Ulmer guarantee. That's a tenagrized powerful guarantee <laughs> yeah. right, right now. It, I, I never, because the, the main person that wrote that out was, was Tom, our, our singer. The, oh, is that it says the author was Screamer. Is that Tom? No, no, no. That I I I this I think this is the Breathing the Core. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Breathing the yeah, Core. Yeah, Breathing the Core. Yeah. So it's like a t- short form interview. Yeah, Tom yeah, Tom took the reins on cuz he was the one that was talking with Gary Tong, um the artist for both albums. He he was the guy that um really went through the process with him. Cool. And it was one of those things where like I said earlier he was, I found him through Armory's Imperium Realms album. Yeah. And then we got a hold of him to there. And short story with that, we tried to get him for the first album. He didn't respond to us. We tried to look for these other guys. They all flaked out. We went back to him a couple months later and he's like, oh, we didn't find that email. I didn't, I didn't see that email. I'm sorry. I usually get back to you. Yeah, of course I'd Aww. love to work. With you. I'm like, this is it. This is Tom and I were ecstatic because like whenever we looked at his art, it's like, this is it. This is, this has it's, to be it. So he it's did this. Cool he art. did this like this like solar flare looking like purple and orange thing <laughs> on your 2015 album too. <laughs> yes, yeah, and he like we kind of gave him some ideas with that one, and then when we saw the even the first rough draft, like the color scheme and and all of that was just just breathtaking. I was just like, wow, this is great, and I and I feel like. His his name's spreading a little bit because uh, Matt from Shadow Strike got a, got a hold of me uh, like months ago and asked who did our album artwork for now. This is real. I think that's how it went. And before I knew it, he Gary did a art. He did art for their upcoming album, which I think is I don't know when. Uh, oh, I lost my. You you, you, you have any fine. leaks about oh. about Shadow um, Strike to share? But yeah, I think. 
Sorry, you'll have to repeat the question. He lost no, his no, earbud it's, for it's a not, second. I, I'm all good. But, um, yeah, whenever their album's coming out, um, I've he, he did their art too, and it's glorious and awesome as usual. So I, I really hope um, Gary Tong does more work, if anything, in the with more power metal bands because his his work is is like works quite well, I think, with this genre. Cool. I guess that's your leak. Uh, they Shadow yeah. Strike has an album and their art is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, so, did you just leak something you're not supposed to? No, no. Their their <laughs> album artwork's been online, I believe. I've seen it I've online. Seen it. Oh, okay. I saw the old art, but the old art looks like it's by the same. It's a very similar style. I, I've recently seen Shadow Strike, their new their new album, and they've said Gary Tong is their, their artist. And I mean, I don't know. May, maybe... Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he got it from someone else. <laughs> maybe he's just second guessing or I got to stop drinking this beer. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to keep in your beer. That means it's so. delicious. That's good. It's That's very, good. it's very good beer. Um, but, but no, where am I at? I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I've gotten completely off track. <laughs> All right, cool. It seems that a lot of things inspire you, which is awesome. Like, the art inspires you, beer inspires you, and a lot of your um, music is themed off of like TV shows, movies, uh, Magic the Gathering, I guess. So I want to know specifically which TV shows, movies, and game composers inspire you. Mm. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if it'll end up being this way, but uh, there, there's a song that I'm working on that, that's kind of inspired by Darkest Dungeon. There's some more Malazan stuff in the pipe. There's a bunch of 40K stuff in the pipe. Ooh, Ooh neat. Uh, I love 40K yeah. stuff, too. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Those are two of my uh, favorite franchises. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's some Assassin's Creed stuff in the pipe. What else? The, you guys, uh, you guys are obviously working on the the hit new Sekiro song too, right? To show up like, for your slate. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting owned in that game right now. I think right before this, I got beaten up by the Monkey King or whatever the oh, hell. We were just is. talking about the monkey. I killed the monkey yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just got beaten up by him. I uh, anyway, yeah, we're we're a bunch of nerds, so. Me, me and the drummer are currently chatting at each other on Discord and going through that. It's great. I actually like it probably better than uh. Most of the, uh, all the Dark Souls, I think. It's it, not gimmicky, which is the best part. Well, that's, and, and that's it doesn't, off topic. it's not like super punishing, like a lot of what makes Dark Souls hard, in my opinion, is just that it's very punishing. So it's like, oh, you lose all your crap when you die. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to go grind that crap again, you know. But what... You know, Sekiro is like you, you have to be on top of it all the time because you're just constantly being swung at. You know? yeah. Cool. That was a nice review of Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is what this is Thanks about. For right? that. Yeah, of course. We've reviewed beer. We've, we've reviewed video games, talked a little bit about Malazan. Um, yeah. So just bringing it back to uh, power metal real quick are you guys friends with like other north american power metal bands and do you have any touring plans in the near future um we'll answer the first question yeah we sure. we know we know a bit we know i know jason from hellion prime and hi jason and dire <laughs> peril i fun fact i play guitar for them for their last mini tour oh um, cool and which is neat. This is like really meta moment. But I was listening to uh, the one with John Yelland on it, and he's talking about running over a something like a coyote or something in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I remember being woken up by that. And so <laughs> when I was listening to you guys talk about that, and hearing that, it just it just transformed oh me back there. And I'm all like, whoa, this is this is some meta <laughs> stuff. And I know I'm doing the same thing right now, saying it on. A microphone to you guys on one you know, of your things. Somebody's going to be talking about this conversation in the, in the near future, so <laughs> it goes. Yeah. We played a bunch of shows with uh, Spellcaster, and so sometimes we're we're chatting with uh, the guy or two who's still around in that. Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. From he's in Idle Hands now. Um, yeah, I got to check uh, those guys out. It, it, I mean, there, there's a couple other ones that are still alive that have been around for you know as long as we have. Um, can't, I can't 
uh, quote who I'm thinking of uh, in Seattle. Skeletor. Uh, yeah, Skeletor. They've got a few albums out. Um, you know, we have uh, Jake from Visigoth on this album. Uh, for, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, for cool. a- Across the Ancient Desert for reasons oh. that I, I will not explain. No, but, no, um, that's a very clear reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there any plans for that project to continue? Oh my goodness! That, as far as you guys are aware, we won't that, name names. Um, not not that I know. Of. I just. <laughs> uh, well, wait, are you talking about uh, Jake's other thing? No projects to continue across the ancient desert sound, like having Jake. On. Oh, I, well, that'd be cool, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's just a one-off. It's just a one-off thing for now. We, yeah. uh, the vocals that are on there, we are looking for more of that style. Um, but that's a future conversation that we'll maybe we'll have on this podcast another day. Cool, that's um, exciting. But yeah, so we have kind of random connections around. You know, John Yellen, who's in like a thousand bands. I'm a big fan yeah, of yeah. Uh, Is he Dysphoria, in, which in, unfortunately in your band died. As well. But uh, Dysphoria uh, might uh, be coming back. <laughs> it's what? Wait, wait, wait. Are we allowed to say that? Yeah, that was on the podcast. Oh, oh yeah, okay. They're coming back? <laughs> Maybe. Ah, oh, that'd be interesting. I, it's I, a, it's I was chatting with them uh, last time we played a show with a bunch of the guys from that. I was chatting with the guy who's the keyboardist for Dysphoria. And I was just sitting there, you know, telling him about, ah, oh, the last song of the album is so good. I was comparing it to... Um, Let's see. What's track number four on uh, Demons and Wizards? Which album? Uh, uh, green album. Green uh, up. <laughs> not Fiddler on the Green. Yeah, Fiddler on the Green. Oh. I was I was making a comparison between green the last album. song and that on the Dysphoria album to Fiddler on the Green, and I was like, man, that thing blew me away in the same way. You know, that, I, I know I'm way I'm way on right field right now, but uh, uh, they were uh, they were kicking around the idea of doing a reunion show. I don't think they. Maybe oh, recording a, a couple extra like tracks. A, like a farewell kind of closing thing. And uh, they would like to record or re-record some tracks if mm. they had the time. But that was like a far off, super Yeah, some of those tracks kind are, of idea. are amazing to me. But... Yeah, they're they're good stuff. I, I saw them in Eugene in like 2014. Like some random show. Wow. And we played it's a, it's a ways out of I mean, the way. Yeah. <laughs> it is a little bit. Well, we play the adjudicator. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, half the guys. Half what the guys? It's cool. just John. No, no, no. It's also the keyboards. You guys going to get uh, you guys gonna get John on for a future track? I don't think guess so. <laughs> It'd be neat. I, I, he, he does guest I, vocals for anyone, dude. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out, I guess. But um, I like John. I don't know. He's in 100 bands already, so. But he's great. He's, he's a good guy. He's a, you could get, he's, you know who else does guest vocals for anyone? Uh, Hansi, you could get them both. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just <laughs> replace all track. of our vocals with uh, guest vocals here. <laughs> oh, Maybe Biscuit need to- just wants uh, Hansi and John to do another duet on someone's song. Yeah. Well, that, that wow. track was great, yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. Cool. Um, how about touring? Like, are you guys, you know, West Coast tour maybe? Trip to Cali? I'm probably not supposed to say, uh, go into this too much, but right now we're still okay, be down. Be, be vague. We're, we're still down the members we would need for touring. So we're we're going to be okay. dealing with that in the near future. We're hoping that some of the promotion of the album will get people excited and we can, um, yeah, start trying people out again. Cool. That is great information to know. <laughs> Yeah. And um, lastly, since we already talked about your um, whatever beers you're drinking right now, do you have any favorite local craft beers in Portland? Local, local beers. Um, Yes. I got to go with, like I said, my favorite beer of all time. By (gasps) all time? All time beer. Yo. This this was the one that got me into IPAs. It's a. it's uh, the X114 by Widmer, Widmer Brothers. Widmer. Um, they made this beer with this hop called, I think it was called the X114. It was an experimental hop. Wow. That I think okay. became the uh, citrus hop I th- or something similar. I don't know the science. I'm not. It's like similar to Citra, which is like in everything. Well, yeah. I, I, I think Citra comes in from the Pacific Northwest too, doesn't it? Crap. Yeah. Don't quote uh, me on that though. I'm just like remembering that, vaguely. Okay, I'll, I'll That's I'll a fair quote. <laughs> cool. Um, but it's it's definitely that one cuz that made me like 
not hate IPAs anymore, which yeah. could be it's that could be a bad thing, you know, because maybe, <laughs> maybe we weren't supposed to like IPAs. Maybe everyone. You no, know, I think I think the IPA that kind of changed it for me was from Portland, actually. It's um, it's Juice Junior from Great Notion. Mm. It's an Alberta area. Oh, yeah. I didn't start drinking beer really until I was in this band. And then, you know, Tom yeah. was such an IPA guy and into the super mm -hmm. bitter stuff. And I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, I'll I'll have one. And then eventually I, I got into the, all the bitterness and now I'm just a bitter man, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're like, give me all the floral. <laughs> I just want to drink more flowers. But I think a lot of IPAs now are like on the juicy end, you know? Yeah. 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 If it doesn't taste like there's a pound of bark in each bottle of beer, yeah. you know, it's Just not good. Just grind up some tree bark and yeah. give it to <laughs> it's me. Like, it's like I need some splinters in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then aside from beer, we saw that you guys were into this place called Fire on the Mountains. What is that? We used to go a lot more, but uh, there's a wing place called Fire in the Mountain. I don't believe it's actually originally Portland. I believe it's actually originally Arizona, if I'm not. Arizona? Uh, I think it's Colorado. Oh, I've never Somewhere heard that's of. not here. Somewhere that's south of here, not here. All right. So I believe their original location is is in Arizona or Colorado or whatever it was. I don't and think And then they came here, and then it, it blew up here. And so, uh, actually, that was one of the times I met with Josh before the band was formed. I was just, like, hanging out. And he's like, oh, yeah, they got these super hot wings. And so I came here and had a, a, some El Jefe and burnt the crap out of my face and so stomach. So they're, they're like, great. super spicy. Well, one of one of the neat things about them is, yeah, they, they have some wings called El Jefe, which got, like, some pure capsaicin in it, uh, along with some ghost pepper. Jesus Christ. Those things will burn <laughs> the crap out of you, man. But, um... Yeah, so between that and so that that blew up here and now there's like three locations around Portland alone. And then I imagine that they'll probably spread somewhere else uh, with their next thing. But, you know, I don't know. Cool. I mean, you like them enough to put them as your uh, band description of what you're <laughs> into. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, definitely. There, there was a lot of band meetings. So they've that, you're also that into now. astrophysics and dinosaurs, apparently. <laughs> Like astrophysics, that's Tom, Josh, uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, okay, um, cool. Fire on a mountain, game stuff. beer. Yeah. Well, who isn't in the dinosaurs, yeah. though? It's, it's, yeah, Josh being a big fan of uh, Jurassic Park. Can we yeah. start cool. the Jurassic Park song? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, no, because Josh isn't isn't part of the band anymore, so unless he does a guest song or something like that. Fair enough. You'll have to catch his uh, his own project. Yeah, check All out... Right, there'll, oh, there'll be Jurassic Park songs there. Yeah, he, there might, might as well. Like His band Elizarin is like instrumental prog. Whoa. It's really good. And it's like cool. cinematic and great. But I wouldn't be surprised if he had like eight dinosaur songs or uh, an album all about dinosaurs. Yeah, well, uh, he, just cross between, he just rewrote yeah. the Jurassic Park score. It'll Whoa. probably be Jurassic Park mixed with X Files if it's Josh. Sounds basically. spooky and dinosaur-y. <laughs> well, those are all the questions I have for you tonight, Biscuit. You got more? You guys got anything else you want to say? Any any sweet announcements? Any sweet leaks? Sweet leaks. And um, where can our listeners find you on the internet? Um, easiest part: Snogger, top Snogger Band at Bandcamp.com. That's the weirdest one to say. Um, but that's where you can find our album. That's where you can buy our merch. That's the easiest way, I guess, to support us. You can also find us on Spotify and basically other every other streaming uh, service that there is. Yeah, yeah. And then Facebook at tenograband.com, I believe. Um, and, and Instagram. That's the new one we're doing. Technically, Instagram. there's a Twitter okay, as well. Okay, I'll add you on Instagram. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's that's... I'm trying to keep up with the times and apparently it's hard. that's where Instagram's hard to do. It yeah. Is. Like it's, it's interesting. I like the concept of just using, you know, visuals. Yeah. I'm, I'm really impressed at the people who are like diligent enough to like update theirs every day. I cannot think of something to post every day. <laughs> we have, most yeah. of what we post is like merch and concert photos. And you memes. definitely take we the like same. Memes. Yeah, and memes. Yeah. You definitely take the same photo every day and repost it. Right. That's I'm genius. pretty sure that's how it works. <laughs> it's like, we're rehearsing. 
We're mixing. <laughs> we did it again. We're listening to other bands. Yay. <laughs> that's that's probably the hardest thing for being a you know a band or anything is just generally updating like content. All like your that. social media. Yeah, for sure. As content creators, we we feel you in a sort of different way. I, I see the similarities. I, <laughs> yes. I see the the, yes, the, except the you metaphors. guys have actual talent, oh. <laughs> which is fantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else big, big to chat about right now. Yeah, cool. Well, Sorry. thank you guys so much for coming on our little show with us. We and were glad to be on. It's it's a super fun to do yeah. podcast stuff. So. I know. Yeah, I like, I, like, I like I like this. I feel very relaxed. Maybe it's the beer. I don't know. That's it's, the uh, that's the powerful aesthetic, my man. Wow. Yeah. That's and we've got one one more um powerful aesthetic. Uh how do you say this in a cool way? Can you tell <laughs> our listeners to stay powerful? Ooh. Stay powerful, listeners. Is that good? Do you need a better one? From No, we that's want, perfect. We want from uh from both of you. We're gonna put this so, in like some collage or something. Do you wanna like synchronize it? Well, well, we, however we you want. Uh what yeah, do you, you want us to together. call them? Listeners or what? <laughs> Whatever. Nerds. Call them nerds. nerds. Stay, yeah, call them stay, nerds. stay powerful nerds. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, we want you to stay powerful, you nerds. Yes, that was perfect. <laughs> I love it. We're going to use that one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to stop recording now. I think we're done. But don't, okay. lose your, don't lose your audacity files. Don't be me. So we're going to hit stop.